This is Thursday, and that means, of course, we have a medical segment. We'll put on the fine doctors from Kaiser Permanente serving right here in our community. And Dr. Miller is back with us today. Good to have you back on the show today. Thanks for having me. Um, gastroenterology, our digestive system, top to bottom, as uh, right. kind of your area of specialty. That's right. Um, you're more in the diagnostic area, correct? That's correct. Right. So you would, you would maybe get referred to, someone would be referred to you by their family doctor saying, this person's having some digestive system problem and That's right. maybe you can help us figure out what's going on there. Exactly. Today we're talking about the upper part of the program, the upper mm -hmm. part of the passageway, so to speak, there. <laughs> um, and it's a term that you folks use called GERD, right. um, which I thought was a misspelling of somebody's name, but actually those <laughs> letters stand for what? Those letters stand for gastroesophageal reflux disease. And people might not have uh, actually heard of that term per se, but I'm sure everybody's heard of things like heartburn or acid reflux, right. and those all fall under this GERD. Um, in addition, under gastroesophageal reflux, we can have erosive esophagitis, um, Barrett's esophagus. So there's kind of a spectrum mm -hmm. of diseases within that umbrella. Right. Um, and I guess everybody from time to time has an upset stomach right. or a heartburn or right. that that burning sensation, as the commercials say. Exactly. Um, lots of advertisements for over-the-counter preparations. Yeah. And then there's things that have been around for years, like Tums and mm -hmm. those kind of things as well. Yeah. Um, the so fla flavored chalk, I call it. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, sometimes that takes care for people. If not, they come to see you. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's a really common uh, problem. I'm sure if you ask everybody, everybody's had heartburn at right. some point. And in fact, if you took a poll in the United States, about 25% would say, yeah, I've had heartburn sometime in the last month. Mm -hmm. um, so it's certainly a big money maker for pharmaceutical companies out there yeah. for all these different medicines. Right. Well, um, is it gender specific? Is it racially specific? Is it age specific? Who gets it? Um, you know, like I said, almost everybody gets it. Um, but there are some kind of things that would uh, make somebody more susceptible for it. Um, you know, if you're someone who carries a little extra weight in the stomach, that's going to make you more prone to it. Um, there's certain foods and lifestyle things that'll make you more prone to it. And I think, you know, just to really, first of all, understand what it is, I mean, we have this tube that goes from our mouth to our stomach. Um, at the end of the tube, there's a muscle called the lower esophageal sphincter. And the job of that muscle is to stay closed um, until food hits it, at which point it relaxes, let the food in the, mm -hmm. lets the food in the stomach. If you put extra pressure on that muscle from the stomach, or if it relaxes inappropriately, then it can let contents from the stomach get up into the esophagus at a time when they're not supposed to. And that can cause the symptoms that we often think of. It can also cause damage like ulcers, strictures, or narrowings, um, and sometimes an even a precancerous change called Barrett's mm -hmm. esophagus. All right, so these are all things that uh, need to get dealt with if it's at that level. Exactly. The occasional, you know, like we have orange funny fair going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> People sometimes go there, everything looks good, and they maybe overeat and maybe get it, but it isn't a persistent problem. But if it's That's a persistent right. problem, family doctor, they send them to yeah. you. Um, all right, so you talked about that certain foods can do it. I guess some people in some cultures are raised on spicy foods. Right. And it doesn't seem to affect them, but those people who maybe aren't traditionally used to eating hot chilies or whatever right. it might be, have that occasionally at a restaurant or something, get well, it occasionally as well. Right. Spicy foods actually surprisingly aren't um, necessarily the problem. What we think about foods that are the problem are foods that will actually relax that muscle. Uh -huh. And these are things that I like. So coffee, chocolate, um, alcohol, uh, wine will do it. In some people, things like tomatoes, citrus, onions, peppermint is another big one. So those are the types of foods that will often bring on mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And then anytime you overindulge, um, you know, anytime you go out and eat a really big meal, you can imagine that fills up the stomach and puts extra pressure on that right. muscle, and that will also trigger these symptoms. All right. So I guess some lifestyle changes would be not overeating if a person's right. heavier or lose some weight. Yeah. Um, watch what they eat if they know certain foods do cause that. Right. Exactly. You know, and that's what I... I counsel my patients on because, you know, look, I'm not going to tell anybody to give up chocolate. I'll have no patients. Nobody will come see me. So I try to tell people these are the foods that can do it. And if you have these symptoms, um, kind of look back and think, did I have, you know, tomato sauce with a glass of wine and then a big cup of chocolate mocha? You know, think about some things that might have triggered it and try to modify that in your diet. Obviously, if you have more severe disease and more damage, then I'm going to tell you, okay, maybe we really have to start avoiding these things till mm -hmm. we get the damage under control. But for the most part, it's just watching your symptoms, watching these foods, knowing what can trigger it, and trying to modify that. 
Okay. Um, supposing people have tried that and they still have the, the, the pain, the reflux, whatever's mm -hmm. going on there, mm -hmm. and you're, you're actually seeing some damage in their throat right. as you examine them. Right. Um, medical treatments that are available. Right. So for, um, you know, for occasional symptoms, things like Tums, Pepto, um, Maalox, those are great. Um, those work by instantly neutralizing the acid, so they work very quickly. Mm -hmm. Then you have your medicines that we call as doctors H2 blockers. These are the things like Pepsid, Zantac. Um, those also work really well and pretty quickly to kind of neutralize mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Some people though who have heartburn almost every day, those people need to be on a regimen where they take a pill every day to mm -hmm. control their symptoms. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have damage there, those people also need to be on a regimen. And usually the drugs we use for that is a class of drugs that we call proton pump inhibitors. I'm sure everybody's heard of the purple pill, Nexium, Prilosec, Omeprazole. So there's a whole group of drugs like that that your doctor might recommend if your symptoms are more persistent and if there's damage. All right. At what point should someone come talk to their doctor about this? Well, you know, I'm a firm believer that anytime you have a symptom that's new for you or concerning for you, you need to talk to your doctor. But the things that I really want to, um, you know, caution people about is if they start to have um, trouble where they feel like food is sticking or they're having trouble swallowing, if they're losing weight, if they're throwing up, if they're certainly if they're having blood, um, you know, or if they've tried some of these over-counter things or they've tried some of these lifestyle changes and it's just not working, then I want you to go ahead and go talk mm -hmm. to your doctor. Well, we're all happy to know that we can still have that bowl of chili and the <laughs> hot fudge sundae, hot fudge over peppermint ice cream That's if right. we're doing things correctly. <laughs> Otherwise, we might occasionally be able to indulge and do that. So. Yeah. That's good news. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks and again, uh, you're me. right up there in Irvine uh, yep. at, this, at the medical office number two there in Irvine. So yep. right up the road from us. Very Thanks for coming good. back today. Good to have you with thank us. Thank you. Dr. Miller, and she's a gastroenterologist and doing a lot of great testing and helping people figure out what's going on with their digestive systems and uh, help them get well as well. We'll be coming back with more news as our program continues for today. Stay with us.